at TY2 Veterinary Centre in Finchley, London. Hello, I am Dr. Andrew Monchar. I'm the head vet at Two by Two Veterinary Centre. I've always wanted to be a vet. Um, ever since I was about three or four years old, I think I've uh, got a photo of me hugging onto a humongous Labrador, and uh, my parents said that that was that was always what I've wanted to do ever since I knew what an animal doctor was. seeing all kinds of creatures, big and small, including big friendly dogs, small rabbits, things like reptiles and birds, and every day is exciting because you never know what's coming around the corner. I really enjoy seeing a wide variety of animals. I see small animals, so dogs, cats, rabbits, um, and other small furry mammals, and I see um, reptiles and birds. Um, I really enjoy the variety, I really enjoy seeing new things every day and that keeps um, working as a bit fresh. To be a vet we need to be good at animal handling, we need to be good at staying calm in stressful situations and we need to be quite good at things like science, biology, um, problem solving and sometimes a bit of math to work out medication doses. To become a vet you need to work really hard at school. You have to achieve good grades at science and, and maths. Um, you also will need to do some work experience either at a vet, maybe a farm, um, sometimes at, at uh, you know, zoo collections before um, going on to university and to become a vet you need to have graduated with a, with a university degree um, and sometimes that takes five years to do and occasionally it will, it will take six. My degree was a six year course and I did um, another degree called veterinary conservation medicine in the middle of the normal veterinary degree. two dogs, um, including a cavalier crossed with a poodle, who's a golden fluffy teddy bear, and a schnauzer called Molly, and I also have a budgie called Rita, who's blue. I have my budgie in a cage in my bedroom, um, next to a window and a, a light source. Um, I feed her a variety of pellets um, that I buy online and a variety of fruit and vegetables such as strawberries, pineapple, mango and she also really likes cucumber. I've worked with zoo animals quite, quite a bit in my career. I've worked at um, a safari park. Um, I, when I was doing my conservation medicine degree I um, worked at Chester Zoo for, um, for a few months. Um, more as keeping the animals um, than being, being a vet for the animals, although that was part of it. And I've also worked in um, Israel on a conservation project where they were um, breeding up all of the uh, all of the animals that are mentioned in the, in the Old Testament and putting them back in the wild. So that was things like hyenas, leopards, wolves. or we have them in our hospital where we perform things like operations. When there's a sick animal that comes into the clinic, we'll tend to speak to the owner and advise to do tests, and that can be testing blood, that can be um, testing we, and that can be testing who. Um, usually, usually something will show up on those tests, and if it doesn't, then we might um, go to the next level, which is usually imaging, so something like an ultrasound, or x-rays to look inside the animal and see if we can figure out what's actually going on. So the best tools that we have to use in the vet clinic are actually our own sensors and we use our eyes, our nose, our sense of touch um, and, our, and our ears to figure out what 
tension might be going on with the animals that are brought in to see us on a day-to-day -day basis. The tools that we have at our disposal, things like a stethoscope um, for listening to hearts and lungs, we have nail clippers to, to shorten nails, we can use an ophthalmoscope to look at eyes, an otoscope to look down at ears and see if there's infections present, use a thermometer every single day, microchips, so there's uh, a lot of basic tools that we, that we use on a day-to-day -day basis and that's not even um, going through the surgical tools that we use when we're doing operations like scalpel blades, clamps and scissors, if we want to mend uh, broken bones then we have to use electric drills and saws for that, so there's lots of different tools that we use on a day-to-day -day basis. X-rays are really useful for looking inside an animal, so we can see the, the organs, we can see the bones, um, and, and uh, we can see if things are maybe not as they should be, maybe there's a broken bone, maybe there's a, a lump inside the animal that shouldn't be there, maybe there's, uh, you know, maybe there's a, a fractured tooth or something like that, we can see that on, on, on an x-ray. The way that we take them is usually under sedation or, or even an anaesthetic because they have to be still while we're, um, while we're taking the x-rays because x-rays are radiation and they can be dangerous so um, we have to have good control over what the animal is doing whilst we're, whilst we're working with that equipment. First of all, when an animal is brought under anaesthetic, we inject them with a sedative drug and we wait for them to go a little bit drowsy. Then we inject the actual anaesthetic drug uh, and that goes into one of the veins. And when they're asleep after the anaesthetic drug, we then put um, a tube down into the airway so that we can control the breathing and we give them oxygen. We can give them um, inhaled anaesthetics, usually something like an isoflurane and that will keep the animal asleep as long as we require them to be asleep for the procedure that they're, that they're undergoing. We're very lucky at 2x2. Two um, we are based in London and the Royal Veterinary College is just down the road, so we have a lot of specialist colleagues very close by that we potentially can ring and ask questions of. Um, maybe they've got more direct experience of the rarer diseases than, than um, what we would see in a general practice. Um, and indeed, we can refer um, we can refer these animals over to our more specialist colleagues in the hospital setting if needed. Treats and cuddles. There are many different strategies for dealing with stressed animals in the vets um, that can range from simply scooping a small dog in, in a thick towel so that it can't bite us but uh, we're still able to access uh, the animal's body to uh, listen to its heart for example um, and that can range from them wearing protective gloves maybe with gauntlets to protect our arms from being, uh, from being bitten or scratched by uh, an aggressive animal um, all the way up to sedating sometimes if you've got a very large dog that is um, aggressive towards staff staff safety is the priority and we, we have to give them chemical sedation to restrain the remains. Sometimes when animals are really poorly, it's for their own benefit if they are put to sleep. We give them a, an anaesthetic so they just feel like they're going for a long sleep but unfortunately they don't wake up from it. And it's generally in situations where they are suffering a bit so we think it's for the benefit of the animal and the owner seems to understand that and they also want the best for the animal, especially if they're in pain.